Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation on the forward forward algorithm. So this was recently presented by Jeffrey Hinton as an alternative to backpropagation. And you're probably thinking, hey, I like backpropagation. It works pretty well for me, what's wrong with it? Well, unfortunately, backpropagation is not biologically plausible. So if we're trying to model something like human intelligence, backpropagation will probably not be the solution. So what is the forward forward algorithm? Well, first let's look at backpropagation. So the idea is you have activations which you flow through the network where you then calculate a loss and then use that to get a derivative which you pass backwards layer by layer through the network. Now with the forward forward algorithm, we actually calculate a loss at each individual layer. And this loss is used to update the weights of that layer and that layer alone. Now, how can you get a loss at each layer? You might be wondering. The idea is you use what is called positive and negative data. So positive data is simply correctly labeled training data. So throughout this, we'll be using the MNIST data set as that is what Hinton used in his original paper. So if we have a four, um, a picture of the number four, we're gonna have the one hot encoding that corresponds to a four. And that's positive data, simple as that. Negative data is just going to be uh, just like positive data, except it has the incorrect label. And our goal in the network is to maximize the sum of squared activations when we give it positive data. And we want this sum of squares to be above a certain threshold. The negative data, on the other hand, we want to minimize that below a certain threshold. This was the architecture that we used, so a simple multi-layer perceptron. And you might be wondering, why do we use a perceptron when we're doing image classification as opposed to a CNN? Well, the answer came from Hinton himself, where he told us that CNNs are simply not biologically plausible um, because weight sharing uh, is not really possible with the way that our neurons work. So we were able to pretty much match his baseline and almost achieve the same accuracy with forward forward as with back propagation. Um, but we were wondering, maybe we could do better than this. So we wanted to manipulate the threshold because that seemed to be a pretty core component of the algorithm. So what is the threshold? Well, you'll notice that there's a direct relationship between the threshold and the sum of squared activations. And the sum of squared activations is going to go up the more neurons you have. So there's some sort of a linear relationship. And in Hinton's original paper, he actually used a one-to-one -one ratio uh, to match the threshold with the number of neurons in a layer. So if a layer had 2,000 neurons, he would choose a threshold of 2,000. We experimented with a couple of different thresholds, so maybe using a 0.5 ratio, or 2, or 10. And we noticed that having a smaller amount of a threshold, so multiplying the neurons by 0.5 or 0.3, actually had some great results and improved our accuracy by a, a decent margin. We also experimented with increasing the threshold throughout the network. So starting with a low threshold and increasing it as you go through the network, because earlier on, it might be harder to achieve higher activation values. So after doing these ablations, we decided to try out a totally new task and data set. So I'll hand this off to Advit to talk about that. So we've seen previously that the forward forward network does really well on image data. Now, we wanted to see if it can generalize as well as neural networks trained by backpropagation can, and therefore we decided to switch domain and pick up an NLP task instead. So the task that we, we chose is the IMDb movie reviews dataset. It essentially has movie reviews for around 50,000 movies in the dataset, and the task is to figure out if a given review is either a positive review or a negative review. And we saw that the forward form network does really well over here as well. You see, again, we were able to re-implement the baseline set by backpropagation. And keep in mind, this is again all for fully connected networks and not for RNNs as they are biologically implausible. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first time that someone has managed to use the forward-forward algorithm in order to do a non-computer vision task. So where do we take this from here? What we've seen so far is that we've able to uh, tweak the threshold in order to achieve better performance, as well as move on to different domains like NLP. The two things that we believe are future important work is first to make the activation function also biologically plausible. We do have some negative results in this domain and we believe it's an exciting area for people to work on. Lastly, we know that the brain learns over time. However, backpropagation through time is especially implausible. Therefore, figuring out how to use the forward forward network in a recurrent manner is also an important direction of future work. That's our presentation. Thank you for listening.